We will have two more speakers before we go to a panel discussion. Uh, first of them is Colonel Jörg Darien from the, uh, not from the, he is the director of the NATO Cooperative uh, Cyber Defense Center of Excellence. Uh, this uh, Center of Excellence is a multinational um, cyber defense hub that supports member states and uh, NATO itself with unique interdisciplinary expertise in the field of cyber defense research, uh, training, exercises covering uh, the focus areas of technology, strategy, operations, and law. Um, Welcome, Mr. Tarian. All right. Uh, good morning, afternoon, night, evening, uh, wherever you are in the world. Uh, General Mattis once allegedly said that PowerPoint makes the audiences dumber, so I'm, uh, uh, I'm sure I couldn't accomplish that, but uh, I'm, I'm going to try to make it challenging on myself and not use slides. Uh, anytime somebody from Center of Excellence talks about NATO, uh, I have to start with a disclaimer. Uh, the Centers of Excellence, while carrying the name NATO in their title. Uh, we do not get NATO common funding, we're not part of NATO command structure, and thus we do not represent or speak on behalf of NATO. So anything I say, it's uh, opinion of myself or the center, but, but not, not that of, uh, of NATO. Now, when I was preparing for this, uh, I was afraid I'm going to be under-delivering the excitement of change, saying that, well, uh, there isn't all that overabundance of change. Um, when I started listening to the president and the follow-on speakers, I, I felt that, hmm, uh, we're all saying the same thing. It's uh, uh, <coughs> a rather, rather evolutionary uh, change, not a revolution. In a, in a military uh, application of cyber, uh, cyber domain, uh, the change hasn't been that great. Uh, the revolutionary point for NATO and uh, NATO understanding of cyber I would designate 2007 attacks on Estonia, when Estonia was the first nation to be attacked on a politically motivated basis by another nation. Uh, that really got NATO thinking uh, on uh, terms like uh, what is the relationship between cyber attack and sovereignty, cyber attack and collective response, etc. Uh, and NATO made policy changes, so let's, let's go over what has not changed and what is, what is a solid pillar. In 2014, NATO declared cyber defense to be part of NATO core task of collective defense. Uh, subtle note being that a cyber attack against NATO nation can be met with a collective response either uh, in a regular kinetic way or by cyber means. Um, 2016, uh, NATO recognized cyberspace as a domain of military operations uh, in which NATO must defend itself as effectively as it does in air, on land or at sea. Uh, naturally, NATO still uh, before, during and after the pandemic needs to defend its, its networks. This task hasn't gone anywhere and NATO is one of the prime targets of many APTs around the world. Uh, the Russian, Chinese, I Iranian, uh, North Korean, etc. Um, NATO allies 2016 committed uh, to enhance their cyber defense posture. Uh, it was a collective promise named the Cyber Defense Pledge. Now, anything tied with resources during a time of crisis, uh, uh, we're all keeping fingers crossed that all the nations will, will stand with that pledge. Um, 2018 was a, was a big step forward in operationalizing cyber. Uh, NATO declared that it may use cyber effects, meaning offensive cyber operations, in its operation, but it will not develop cyber weapons of its own. If the particular NATO nations who voluntarily bring those cyber weapons to NATO operations donate them, then NATO will consider using them. And NATO established the Cyber Operations Center as well in 2018. Now, so what, what can we say that uh, 2000, uh, that the COVID-19 has, has changed um, or, or not changed because of what is changing regardless of, of COVID-19 pandemic? Um, we're, we're keeping close eye, I'm keeping close eye on uh, the little exchange between Israel and Iran. Um, uh, Iran attacking Israeli water system, uh, uh, Israel responding by uh, hacking into Iranian ports and uh, disabilitating them for a, for a uh, day or two. Um, 
very interesting case. This may, while it's outside of NATO, they're, they're not NATO nations. Uh, NATO needs to keep close eye of is that is that the new use of, of cyber, military use of cyber. Mm. Uh, COVID-19 time, would it affect NATO cyber rapid reaction teams of being deployed? Um, I, I don't know and I don't think it's a big issue. Uh, here in Estonia, uh, NATO exercise Defender 2020 was uh, short of cancelled but uh, significantly changed, but that's an exercise. The operational rotation of personnel took place. The NATO Enhanced Forward Presence Battalion, the NATO Air Policing Units, uh, they maintained the regular rotation. We managed to do it through the pandemic. So I, I don't think if there is a need, then NATO would have problem deploying any operational units. Um, resources. Uh, now that's, uh, that's, uh, that's a big question. I already mentioned that. Uh, will nations through and after the crisis, keep their defense spending up, keep uh, allocating money to innovation, um, or will the capability gap, as, as such uh, defined, keep on growing? Uh, I must have been a captain. Uh, 2005, I wrote my master's thesis in uh, staff college on capability gap between allies. Then it was mostly focusing on air power, on precision munitions, etc. The capability gap is still there, it's just in different areas. And now we're talking artificial intelligence uh, and other cyber, very cyber uh, related issues. So uh, it, is, it is a big area where the allies need to come together collectively and start, uh, start um, making changes of uh, how we do things and how we develop our forces. What needs to change? Uh, Communication seems to be kind of like your paycheck. No matter what's the number, you always fear you are one third short. Uh, so no matter how, how good uh, your, your bandwidth, how good your communications, what's the integration of them, uh, there, is, there is always room for improvement. Um, example, live example. Uh, when the pandemic hit, uh, NATO, as everybody else in the world, faced the work from home situation. NATO has a very robust secure classified communication network uh, called NATO Secure Wide Area Network. Um, every NATO unit, every, every working area has a you know, crypto box, computer, uh, designated wires. Uh, it works really well. Now, when people work from home, uh, they work with their government issued computers. Naturally, it has to be unclassified, but information is still for official use only. We started doing video conferences like everybody else. Then we hit uh, uh, na national regulations. Uh, some nation doesn't allow Skype, some nation doesn't allow go to meeting. Uh, I had to break the rules sometimes because Allied Command Transformation called the meetings on go to meeting. Estonian Defense Forces do not allow go to meeting on their computers, so I used my home computer, which probably broke NATO security regulations. Uh, everybody had to scramble uh, to make things happen, and we made things happen, uh, but we need to have a, a common agreed upon and tested platform for, for collaboration uh, from remote. Uh, control over supply chain probably was mentioned today a couple of times. Uh, let's give a very hypothetical and robust example of, of supply chain. I'm very glad that Russia doesn't have a big high-tech industry, otherwise they would flood the market with uh, the cheapest and most efficient uh, voting machines. And then we, the West, in our lowest bidder wins uh, acquisition process, we need to face the you know choice of, ooh, do we buy now Russian election infrastructure? Well, uh, do you trust your supply chain or not? And it gets a lot more complex than that in today's globalized subcontracted world. Um, something made by your home country supplier may contain components that you have no idea where, where, where they were made and, and what do they contain extra to what they promised to do. So control of supply chain, uh, I think everybody in the Western world realized that uh, the author authoritarian nations cannot always be trusted. Uh, usual cooperation with the private sector. Uh, it used to be decades ago that a lot of innovation came from the military labs, a uh, little thing called the internet, uh, or arguably uh, iPhone has several key technologies coming from the military. But uh, in the last few decades, it has turned around. The military is uh, getting their innovation and key technologies from the private sector. Uh, it has gotten really expensive. 
uh, sometimes our rigid processes uh, procure us things that are already obsolete. Uh, technology moves so much faster, uh, so uh, we, we need to figure out how to cooperate with the private sector the right way to maintain the technolog technological edge of the West. I'm going to end with that. Uh, Lowry, ready yes. for your questions? Absolutely. Thank you very much. Um, we are going to have a, a little bit of time to actually discuss with you in a panel discussion as well. But before we do that, uh, I do have a question um, about this uh, military civilian um, assistance and um, maybe even cooperation. Even before this uh, pandemic uh, hit, there was in the last couple of years, there was talk uh, internationally about how um, military cyber defense systems could actually be deployed to protect uh, civilian infrastructure, hospitals, uh, uh, electricity providers, and so on and so forth. Uh, how do you see this, um, you know, has this been, this this sort of ideas, have, have these ideas been sped up in this time of pandemic, uh, especially with, uh, with hospitals being the front line right now to be protected and to maybe they are under resourced right now by military assets, military cyber defense uh, people, personnel? Yeah. Uh, I'm not trying to avoid the question, but I'm going to say that... Uh, Use of military resources to assist the civilian side, uh, it's always a national decision tied to national legislation. So there are 30 different answers in NATO with the 30 different nations. Um, I haven't specifically heard of discussions. Uh, at least they haven't, you know, crossed, crossed uh, my attention level uh, in, in uh, the news that I read. But I'm sure they're ongoing, uh, at least in a couple of nations of, of NATO.